everyone i hope you're doing well in this lecture i'm going to take you through the fundamental concepts of designing short reinforced concrete column starting off with the categorization there are several ways the column can be categorized for instance on the basis of loading shape length type of reinforcement used and the material with which the column is built but here we will discuss the most important classification that is on the basis of loading and the lengthwise classification on the basis of loading, column can be classified as number one, actually loaded column. That is those column where the load passes through the center of the cross section. The second one is eccentrically loaded column. That is those column where the load is acting at a certain distance E from the center. Now this distance E can be along X axis or Y axis. If it's along X axis, it would produce moment about Y axis. And on the other hand, if it's along y-axis, it would produce moment about x-axis. Number three is bi actually loaded column. Bi means two. So in this column, bi actually loaded column, the load is applied in such a way that it produces moment about x and y-axis simultaneously. For instance, if the load acts somewhere here, it has a perpendicular arm with respect to both axes, x and y. And this will create moment about both axes simultaneously at the same time. Based on length, column can be classified as short column and long column. The column in which material failure occurs is known as a short column. For instance, in the case of reinforced concrete column, uh, either concrete crushes or steel yields, now that's a material failure and it comes under the category of short reinforced concrete column. On the other hand, the columns in which geometrical failure takes place due to buckling are known as long column. Furthermore, short columns are stockier and cross section, sturdier and long column are thin cylinder like elements and that's why long column are also called cylinder column as well. Also, the load carrying capacity of long column is less than the short column, even if the cross section is same. And cylinderness ratio must be taken into account when designing long column. I'll discuss cylinderness ratio in detail when we will discuss the design of long column. For this video, we will uh, deal with the design of design process of short reinforced concrete column, actually loaded reinforced concrete column. So how can we calculate the actual load capacity of short reinforced concrete column? We can use this equation here, where Pn is the nominal strength or ultimate strength of short reinforced concrete column, Fc prime is the compressive strength of concrete, Ag is the gross area of section which is the total area which includes the area of steel and concrete. Ast is obviously the area of steel and Fy is the yield strength of steel. Uh, material property. So how is this equation formed? We know that we have two material in reinforced concrete column, steel and concrete. So the actual load capacity is basically the summation of the strength of individual material at failure. Since we know that stress is force upon area and from here force will be equal to stress multiplied by area and the total nominal strength is equal to the actual load capacity provided by each individual material, steel and concrete. So sigma concrete area of area of concrete and sigma steel and A of steel. And stress in concrete is assumed to be uniformly distributed and its value is equal to 0.85 Fc prime. area of concrete if we deduct area of steel from the total area of the section that is ag we would get the area of concrete area of concrete is equal to ag minus ast and the stress in steel is equal to fy and area of steel will remain the same so this is how we arrive at this equation. 
which gives us the axial load capacity of short reinforced concrete column. In reinforced concrete column, in addition to longitudinal reinforcement, transverse reinforcement is also provided. In the case of beam, stirrups are provided as transverse reinforcement, whereas in column, ties or spiral play the role of transverse reinforcement. These ties or spiral hold the longitudinal bars in place and also provide lateral bracing. If the column contains series of closed ties running at a certain spacing, the column is known as tight column. So if I draw the elevation of this column, so these are the longitudinal bars and these are the ties that are running at a certain spacing. On the other hand, if the longitudinal bars are ripped using a continuous helical spring, the column is referred to as spiral column. So if I draw the elevation of this spiral column, it would look something like this. And this is the helical spring uh, that is wrapped around these longitudinal bars. Kind of looks like a spiral. So that's why it's known as a spiral column. Furthermore, tight columns can be square, rectangular, circular, and octagonal, and L-shaped as well. And on the other hand, spiral columns are usually round. They can be of rectangular shape, but the helical inside or a spiral inside is kept in circular arrangement. If a typical load deformation of two columns tied in a spiral are compared, a tight column fails suddenly. Whereas a spiral column undergoes large amount of permanent deformation before failure occurs. A sudden failure is not expected in a spiral column, which means that spiral columns are ductile in nature. Let's talk about the safety provisions now. We know that in the design equation on the left hand side we have load and on the right hand side of the equation we have capacity. To make the design conservative, FCI code increases the left hand side by multiplying it with load factors and decreases the right hand side by multiplying it with a strength reduction factor that reduces the capacity. And in the previous video for beam, the strength reduction factor varied from 5 equals to 0 0.90 for tension control section to 5 equals to 0.84 for transition control section. For tight column, the strength reduction factor is kept equal to 0.65 and for a spiral, it is around 5 equals to 0.75. Now why the strength reduction factor of column are lesser than that of beam? Number one reason is the importance of structure. Now if a beam fails, the whole building will not fail. It would be a localized failure. But on the other hand, if the column fails, a large part of building will fail. It can be disastrous. The lowest story column are the most critical columns because they support large amount of loads. All the load from the story above. The second reason is the placing of concrete in columns. It's difficult to place uh, concrete in column as compared to that of beam or in slab. Another question that might be raising in your mind is that why the strength reduction factor of a spiral column is greater than the strength reduction factor of tie? Well, a strength reduction factor also reflects the degree of ductility provided by the structural member. And if we observe the load deformation curve of tight column and a spiral column, we can see that a spiral column undergoes large permanent deformation before failure whereas tight, tight column fails suddenly after reaching its actual load capacity. One last thing to add here is that we have to design short column for minimum eccentricity and the minimum eccentricity is equal to 1 inch or 0 0.05 into h. Now h here represents the depth of a square or rectangular column. Uh, in case of circle, it's the outermost diameter. Now, if you have a 
rectangular column in that case you will take the larger depth now how do we design the column for minimum eccentricity we just need to multiply this equation with k factor and k is equal to 0 0.80 for tight column for spiral it's equal to 0.85 furthermore this equation is only applicable for those column which are subjected to axial load and small bending moment or no bending moment at all For instance, if you have actual load or no bending moment at all, uh, you can use this equation directly to calculate the actual load capacity. Now, another case is that when you have actual load and small bending moment, PU and MU, but MU is small. Now, how small should be this bending moment? So we can use this equation here to calculate the actual load capacity of the column. Let's consider this column here and make two axes x and y and this would be the center of the cross section and let's say we have an axial load let's represent it by p and let's say we have a moment acting about this axis and represented by mu we need to calculate the eccentricity and eccentricity is equal to mu divided by p and compare this calculated eccentricity with E minimum. And if it's less than E minimum, then you can use this formula for this case. For each and every structural member, ACI code has given certain requirements that need to be fulfilled in order to ensure safe design. Number one is the percentage of longitudinal reinforcement that can be used ranges from one to eight percent. The minimum percentage of steel in column that is one person is provided in order to eliminate the possibility of non-ductile failure, reduce creep and shrinkage under sustained compressive force. The maximum percentage which is set to add percent is necessary to avoid overcrowding of bar. The high percentage of steel can cause honeycombing in the column. The ACI code specifies minimum number of longitudinal bars for compression members as follows. For rectangular or circular ties is equal to 4, for triangular shaped tie is equal to 3 and for spiral reinforcement is equal to 6. If the diameter of the longitudinal bar is number 10 or less than number 10, minimum die of tie that can be used is number 3 or 3 by 8 inches. If the dia of longitudinal bar is greater than number 10, the minimum dia of tie that can be used is number 4. So let's assume for the sake of discussion that this column here has 4 number 4 bar. So it means that the minimum tie diameter that can be used here is equal to number 3 bar or 3 by 8 inches dia. All right, now the center to center spacing of ties is the least of 16 multiplied by dia of longitudinal bar or 48 multiplied by dia of tie, or the least lateral dimension of column. So in column, if it's a rectangular column, this is the least lateral dimension. The minimum dia of a spiral is three by eight inches and the clear spacing uh, should range in between one to three inches. And in the last, we have minimum concrete cover in column, which should be equal to 1.5 inches. So there are several different patterns of tie arrangement that are used in tied column. So let's look at them here. The so first we have a square column with four longitudinal bars. And in this case, we only require one tie, one regular tie. And because of this tie, these bars, these corner bars are literally supported by this tie. Now 
Now moving on to this column here, let's assume for the sake of discussion that this clear spacing between the bar is equal to 6 inches. Now these two bars are not laterally supported by the tie. Only the corner bars are laterally supported. And if the distance of these bars is greater than the clear spacing of these bars is greater than 6 inches from a laterally supported bar, then we need to provide an additional tie. However, in this case, the clear spacing is not greater than 6 inch, so we don't require an additional tie. First of all, we will draw the regular tie here. And now the distance of these bars, which are not laterally supported, is greater than 6 inches from the laterally supported bars. In this case, we need an additional tie. We need to tie them. Now you can provide, now it's up to you how do you provide tie here. You can provide a tie like this. Or you can provide a tie like this. Moving on forward, let's assume that the clear spacing in both the directions is greater than 6 inch. Now in this case, first of all, we will draw a regular tie. And now since the clear spacing of these bars, which are not laterally supported, is greater than 6 from a laterally supported bar, we need to tie them. For the same case, you will also find tie arrangement like this in some books. And for the last case, let's assume some bar here as well. And let's assume that the clear spacing between the bars, all bars, is 6 inches. First of all, as usual, we need to draw the regular tie. Now you might say that since the distance between the not laterally supported bar and the laterally supported bar is equal to 6 inch, we don't need any additional tie. But what about this bar here? This bar has, this bar is not laterally supported first of all and it has a distance. The clear spacing of this bar with respect to the laterally supported bar is greater than 12 inches. So we need to provide additional tie. And in this configuration, we need to provide a tie here. and a tie in this direction. So if we provide tie arrangement in such a manner in this column, we can see that no bar is located at a distance greater than 6 inches from a laterally supported bar. And we are done for this video. Thanks for watching till the end and take care. In the next video, we will do a design problem of short actually loaded column.